my family. My, my grandfather was worked for the B&M in different places, and he was freight agents up in Rochester when it was the Portland and Rochester back in the late 1800s. And my great-grandfather, like I say, he was engineer in the Boston Lowell and then on the Boston Main. And so, I don't know, it, it just was in the family. We get orders, train, train orders, out of uh, Mystic. And uh, the, the yard master, uh, yard seven, would give us a train order. And I think those orders read like this. C &E, <coughs> engine 1459. Work extra between Finns and North Bill Ricker, not protecting against extra trains, and wait at Bennett Hall until 345, I believe it was. Well, now the reason for that was there was a passenger train that came out of Middlesex. It was a six wheel switcher and a couple of old dilapidated coaches. And this ran as a passenger extra. And it would pick up the gang, the shop gang up at Lowell, and go down the main line to the shop switch down near East Bill Ricker and then back up into the yard. And the gang would pile off and go to work, and then that was the, the, the shop switcher for the day. And then I believe it was about 3.30, and the shop closed, and they'd get on there, and they'd back out onto the Lexington branch and go from there back down to North Bill Ricker and then back to Lowell. Now, there, I'll defy anybody to sh show me where that is in the time card. And there was a passenger train making a mainline move. Of course, it ran as an, as an extra, but it, it, you, you won't find it in the time card. Well, that was the reason for that weight order, to keep us out of the way of that passenger train. And it was, the weight order was weighed at Bennett Hall until, I believe it was 345. By that time, that train had gone. And then we could go along. Well, with an order like that, <clears throat> it says, work between Fins and North Bill Ricker, that allowed us to go in either direction. Now, if the, if the order had, had read uh, CNA engine 1459, run extra Fins to North Bill Ricker, that didn't allow us to go the other way. But to work between, that allowed us to go in both ways. They'd make that train up down in the Yard 7 in Mystic, and uh, we'd go out the Fitchburg Main Line as far as West uh, Cambridge, and then up, up the branch, up through what they call the Fens, and all the way up, and you'd get up to Arlington, and uh, sometimes we'd stop at, uh, at Lake Street and trying to straighten the, straighten the train out. Because when they made us up in Boston, we, 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 the train would be all mixed up. We'd get up to Lake Street and we'd switch it out. And you'd get up to Arlington now. And there was a consignee, I don't remember the name of it, might have been a lumber yard or something, and we did a little work there. But well, I do remember the one thing was Buttrick's Creamery. Quite often we had a, a milk car on the head end or there was an empty in there to come out and then we'd pick that up and take it along with us. And then we'd go up the hill, it was quite a grade from there on up to Arlington Heights. And get up there and uh, there was a constant up there too and I can't remember the name of that but I do know there was a passing track there. And just beyond there, for a little ways further up the branch, there was a, I think it was a frozen food place, I'm not sure, but they had a sidetrack, but it, it was a, a facing point switch as far as northbound move was concerned.
So if we had a car for them, why we'd have to run around at at, at uh, uh, Arlington Heights on that passing track and get it ahead of the engine and shove up there and set it. And uh, if they had an empty to come out and it was the agent at Arlington Heights to give us the information, if they had a, a, an empty to come out, we'd have to leave the train way down at Arlington Heights and go up with the engine and get it, haul it back and run around in that passing track and then put the train to go out and go along. And we get up to Lexington. Lexington itself, there, I, I don't believe there was a consignee there, and we always went to lunch there, and always took water. The head end man was the one that took the water. I remember that, climbing up and taking water up there. And uh, seems to me I can barely remember there was a small turntable up there. What it was used for, I, I, I never know. We never used it. But uh, we always used to go to lunch there, and what was his name, the agent, Hoxie was the agent there. And then uh, after lunch we'd go along, and if we had cars for Lexington Lumber, if we had a car for them, what you were saying, and they, uh, Revere Street come across there, and it had one of them wigwag crossing things. And what you were supposed to do, and according to the time card, it's right in the time card, I can read it to you, but I don't have to. You were supposed to haul the whole train over the crossing, not shut the wigwag off, and then put a man on the crossing and back up over the crossing, do your work in Lexington Lumber. When you got done there, then you had to back up southbound well, to wherever that ringing circuit was, and then go ahead, and that would start the wigwag, and then you go along. Well, that was an awful lot of do -si -do -ing around. So what we'd do, we'd get up there, and we'd put a man on the crossing with a red flag, and any traffic come by, and he'd let him, you know, let him go, let to keep the wigwag going. We weren't supposed to do that, but it saved an awful lot of fooling around, don't you know? And uh, if the train master was ever up there, he'd climbed on us for that, you know. <coughs> like they say, uh, uh, you fool around with the crossing signals and the train master would rise up and smite thee. Sometimes we'd have cars for Hanscom Field, and you'd go along little ways up there and, and you'd get up Hanscom Field. And back there, cars way in. Um, uh, boy, that track going in there was in good shape. It was all rock ballasted and everything. And you go way in there. We didn't know where to set the cars, but there was always somebody came out there with a pickup truck and tell us where to set the cars. And you'd set off and pick up in Hanscom Field. And then go on up to Bedford. And we always used to haul up well, on the left-hand side of the station to the yard. We had a house car. We set it at the house. And on that job, we'd leave, we used to leave the house car there. And they'd take care of it. Now, some of them jobs, they had what they call a peddler car. And uh, <coughs> a train crew had to unload it. We didn't have to do that at Bedford. And uh, <coughs> sometimes we might have cars for the reformatory branch. Well, I didn't, know, <laughs> I didn't think much of that reformatory branch, I'll tell you, because they had uh, derailments up there. And we'd creep up there and uh, I think 25 miles an hour was the speed limit on that branch. Up into a place that it was known as the filter beds. Why it had that name, I don't know whether it's filter beds up there or not or what. Boy, we'd creep along there. If we ever heard a real snap, we'd, <laughs> we'd go flying. And then uh, we had to go up there and did some work up there and come back and leave the rest of the train down in Bedford and then get put together.
back down over the switch and then call up on the other side of the station and go on up the branch. I remember one day I was flagging a crossing up there and the <coughs> man cut was standing there and he says, when you fellas come back, I always see you go up, but you never come back. I says, we never do come back. He looked at me as though I was a nut, and then I told him, we come back to Boston by another way. But up at the Veterans Hospital up there, we always had, any time I had the job, always had coal cars, either in or out of there. And uh, get up there and <clears throat> set off and pick up. I'm going to tell you something. There was a fellow out there one day working up there, and he told me, he says, you look over there in the woods. He says, you see all them saplings that's bent over? He says, we got an old guy here, and, this, and he was a veteran of World War I, and he's a, a little dingy. He goes over there in the woods, and he sees, him, every time he sees these saplings, he, 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 that's killing a German. One of the first times I ever went up there, I was sitting on the engine, and fireman says, "Did you ever see? Did you ever see uh, Noah's Ark?" That's what are you talking about. Well, he showed me. Now there was a place down there, off on the left-hand side. I looked. He showed me, and it was like a a little pond, and looked like a Japanese kind of a bridge over it, and a knoll. And up on top of that knoll, there was a thing that shaped like a badge, and had a Shed on it, a house on it. He says, "There's no Zach." I said, "I don't know whether he's figuring on the flood or what." But and and that thing was there. Oh, I suppose it's all gone now. But uh, that thing was there all the time. I, I I had to cover them jobs up there. Of course, the rest of that branch. Uh, there was a site in, and I think it was what we called. Uh, Billwick Asana. And sometimes we'd set a car off there. It was a, a public delivery track. We get to North Billwicker, and when we got the OK, got the unlock from, uh, from the dispatcher and cross the road and straighten everything up, and we go to Lowell. We get to Lowell, and we turn the whole train on what they call a New Haven Y. You know what that is? Well, there was a Y that, <clears throat> actually what it was, it was the way the New Haven Railroad came into Lowell from down near Ch Chempstead and, and Sudbury Way. And they would come in and go around that leg of that Y and go down to South Lowell Yard and set that train off and then their engine would go to Middlesex for service. But it was a Y and, and the other leg of the Y went up towards Lowell Depot, and up at the top of this Y was a, was a, ha, a switch uh, that had a lock on it. We used to call it the bear trap, and it, it, either a New Haven switch key would work it or a B&M switch key would work it. I can't describe that thing because it was, it was something else. But anyway, we'd go up that leg of the Y, and get the iron back down the other leg, and we always took water when we got down there, and then go down South Lowell Yard and pick up any cars to go to the shop, and then when we had a run, go down the main line to the other shop switch and back the whole train back up into the yard and set off and pick up and do whatever, and then when we got a run, we'd come back out and down the main line to Boston. I caught that job one day, and I forget who the engineer was, and I don't know whether he was a regular man on there or not, but somehow he'd been, he'd been finding a bottle all day long. I don't know where. And by the time we got up to the, to the shop on the way back, and he was out of it. And conductor come down, and he asked the fireman, he said, can you run this engine? Because we're going from there on just in the, in the Mystic. He says, yeah, I can run it. So he asked me, can you fire it? I said, yeah, I'll fire it. So we took the engine in, we laid him back in a coal pile, and we went from Bill Ricker's shop back into Mystic, fireman running, and me firing. I don't know what, what, 
the situation was when they got at the engine house. I never, never heard any more about it. We got down in there one day, backed off in, in, the, in the yard. We set off and picked up and got ready to go to Boston. And I looked back, get a motion from the hind end. Figured I'd get a high ball. I got a back up motion. I said, the engineer, I said, they want to shove back. Now, we, now them moguls, <laughs> that's one of those Armstrong Johnson bars, you know. Heave it over. So we heaved it over and we started shoving back and I got a stop motion. Stop. Then I got a go ahead motion like this. Heave it over again. Haul ahead, stop motion. Then I got a back up motion again. He wants to back up again. Heave it back. Shove back, stop. The engineers, for God's sake, go back and find out what they're doing back there. Uh, what they were doing, they were cutting wood for the buggy stove and running the buggy over it back and forth like that. I, looked, I, I didn't dare to tell the engineer that. I went up, I said, they're trying to make a hitch that they won't make back there. But uh, he'd have gone back with a coal mall and straightened things out, you know. Because that, those Johnson bars, you know, boy, they could put you through the side of the cab if you wasn't careful.